big journey usually starts or begins with a small step that you take. So you are taking a very small step to learn all the concept at the last minute revision, which is going to give you a massive success. So today I have come up with another unit where we are going to talk about, which is unit number eight, inheritance biology. And the topic that I'm going to talk about is fleiotrophy and polygenic inheritance. So let's proceed on to the table and let's understand that in detail. So the difference between fleiotrophy and polygenic inheritance, it is from Biotechnica's Conceptica table. So let's understand what is fleiotrophy and what is polygenic inheritance. So first let's talk about what is fleiotrophy. So very important you have to understand that fleiotrophy means a single gene controlling many characters. So you can find many characters or we can say traits and you have to understand the difference between a character and a trait as all of us knows that a character is suppose let's take an example like an eye color is a character eye color is a character but if i have to talk about a trait trait is just nothing but blue eye color black eye color so it is the, just the state of a character i can say it is suppose let's take blue eye color so this is going to be the trait so we can say a single gene controlling many characters or many trait is going to be fleiotrophy and what about polygenic inheritance poly means many genic means many genes so the name gives us an idea many genes controlling one character or we can say one trait one character or one trait so this is the major differences between a fleiotrophy and polygenic inheritance so first let's talk about fleiotrophy okay so fleiotrophy is controlling of multiple traits by single gene yes one gene but controls many 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 characters or we can say many traits so one such example you can see over here is phenylketonuria, autism, albinism, schizophrenia, sickle cell anemia. So if we have to talk about phenylketonuria as an example so that you'll understand all the points which is there. I'm talking about fleiotrophy. So if I have to talk about phenylketonuria, PKU, we know that there is a very specific gene called PAH genes. And this gene is going to be expressed as one important enzyme, we can say, which is phenylalanine hydrolysis. And this phenylalanine is going to convert a phenylalanine amino acid into tyrosine. So suppose, let's take a situation that this gene is mutated. So this gene is mutated, you won't have this enzyme. If you don't have this enzyme, you cannot con convert a phenylalanine into tyrosine. So no tyrosine formation. So there is maximum phenylalanine in your body. If maximum phenylalanine is present in your body, which means there is going to be less amount of melanin pigment, which is one of uh, the character. Or if it is going to be less melanin, definitely there is going to be fair skin, very fair skin. People will have mental retardations and people will have abnormal postures and all these things are different, different characters. So melanin is less, fair skin and then met, uh, mental retardation is different. All these things are different characters, many characters. But who is controlling it? One gene, which is pH gene, is actually controlling all these characters. So fleiotrophy is something we can say that one gene controlling multiple characters or multiple traits. I'm just taking this as an example, which is given over here. So albinism, you can check. Example is albinism, phenylketonuria, autism, schizophrenia, sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia also we already know about it. So fleiotrophy is controlling of multiple traits by single gene. Yes. A particular trait is controlled by one gene. Yes. Just now I told you. Let me take this as an example. Phenylketonuria as an example. PAH gene. And this gene is controlling many characters. I told you. Mental retardation. And I told you it's going to be less of melanin. 
and fair, very, very fair skin. And there's going to be a hair also turning whitish. This can happen. And there's going to be abnormal posture. So they're telling a particular trait. Suppose if I'm going to talk about mental um, retardation or melanin is becoming late. This a particular trait is actually influenced by this gene. Only one gene only. Yes, that's the next point. A particular trait is actually influenced. Every particular trait is actually influenced by this only one gene. That's the second point. The third point says the effect of one gene on its trait is 100%. You can see this is only one gene. This one gene can give 100% effect of showing mental retardation. It shows 100% uh, influence or effect to reduce the number of melanin. So this one gene can do 100% effect on every character or every trait. That's the third point. And pleiotrophy usually follows Mendelian's inheritance pattern. This is going to be the next point. And usually if you see phenylketonuria or autism or albinism or schizophrenia, all these things are not, or we can say pleiotrophy is not affected by any of the environmental factors. That's going to be the next point. And the last point is going to be the example. One gene controlling many characters at trait. You can see autism, phenylketonuria, schizophrenia, albinism, and sickle cell anemia. This is all about pleiotrophy. Now we are going to see what is polygenic inheritance. Many genes controlling one character or we can say one trait. So let's talk about polygenic inheritance. Polygenic inheritance is the controlling of a single trait by many genes or we can say many genes. Suppose let me take an example as skin color. In skin color let's take there are three genes which means more than two genes, we can say multiple genes, A gene, B gene and C gene. And these three genes are going to give skin color, which is going to be one character. One character. One character. So it's going to give many genes controlling only one character. A polygenic inheritance is controlling of a single character or a trait by multiple genes. That is understood. Here, a particular trait is influenced by many genes. Suppose I'm talking about this skin color is actually influenced by many genes. Yes, A gene, B gene and C gene. So the second point goes like this. The effect of one gene on the trait is very small because suppose if I'm talking about dominant characteristics, capital A, capital A, capital B, capital B and capital C, capital C. If all the three genes are going to be dominant, then the skin is going to be very dark or we can say black, black, which means we do not know how much is the contribution of each of these things. So the effect of one gene on this trait is relatively small. But in pleiotrophy, we said one gene is only present. So that gene will show 100% effect on the character. But here we have three genes. So the effect of one gene on this character is relatively small. That is going to be the next point. And it also shows but non-Mendelian inheritance pattern, it does not show Mendelian in the in inheritance pattern. It is non-Mendelian inheritance pattern. Very important. This trait is influenced by environmental factor. A skin color is actually determined based on the environmental factor. So this trait is determined by the environmental factor. But pleiotrophy is not determined or not influenced or not affected by the environmental factor. And the example for polygenic inheritance is the gene controlling height. Yes, there are many genes controlling the height and there are many genes controlling the weight and many genes controlling the body type, which is a single uh, character, eye color, skin color and the hair color of human beings. So today we have talked about what is the differences between a pleiotrophy and polygenic inheritance. Pleiotrophy, one gene controlling many characters and polygenic many gene controlling one character or one trait. And today we have found out all the differences between them. And I believe and I'm very sure that this video is helpful for you and you have understood all the things that we have dealt today. So if you really like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. If you want to join our channel, please do join and we have a telegram channel. You can join us and thank you all of you for your time and I'm going to meet you back again in the next video. Until then, thank you all of you.